Okay, so at last the latest version of LMD7 GG has been released. And we're going to test it out today and see what is new in this update. So yep, let's begin. So as we can see, it is LMD7 GG, well GG. And it is based on the latest version of Debian 13 and Linux kernel 6.12. And as we can see, it still uses X11. But once you install it and it will detect GPU or whatever other things, it will directly go into Wayland. And let me just start with the most significant amount of updates, okay? So the first one is the obvious. We have the new APT 3.0 released. And this one includes that. That means it's gonna download well. It, it's gonna have smarter dependency solutions. Let me just try. sudo apt install pahu control. Enter. There you see, it's really really fast. Even if it's the first time I'm searching Pavo, it's going to have to fetch all the things from the repository and then download the details of all the packages in that repository and then search for Pavo control or that. And that was how it fast it meant for me here. And yeah, now let's see. Let's install a little heavier one. For example, VLC. VLC. And now it's going to be even faster. Just, oh sorry, just like this. It was able to instantly grab all the details of the dependency and the download has begun. Well, I'm gonna cancel it for sure. What was it? Control Shift C or just Control C? Well, it, it was Control C only. Now, leaving that, that's the first update. The OG base of APD package management has been improved. And now, the next most important thing is actually in the software center. Let's go. Well, it's software manager. So in software imagine now it clearly shows that whether the package is a normal package directly from the Debian repository or from Flathub. Earlier you could not see that. For example, here in OBS you have Flatpak, while Spotify is native Debian, while Telegram is Flathub, Discord is Flathub, but Blender and GIMP are not. This is indeed a significant improvement in a software manager. It allows you to be mindful of which sort of software you're actually installing before actually clicking on it and seeing if it's in Flatpak or somewhere else. For example, in OBS, you have both options as a system package and Flatpak package from Flatter. And it gives you proper details of what you need to know. For example, in the Flathub, it's going to download 1.3 GBs, while on the system one, just 40 MBs. It gives you the clarity of what sort of thing you're going to install and how much it's going to cost you in terms of storage. And now the next update is in the application Hypnotics. Now, as we know, it allows you to watch free TV, which means you can watch so many channels from different countries. For example, in India, you have news channels, while the other ones might have some movie channels or other plus, other something. While in Italy, you have so many channels available to watch. Yep, it depends on country to country. <clears throat> but the main update here is something else. Let's say you're watching something. Well, let me just go for English movies. An English movie channel from here, maybe. Oh, let me just do that. Come on then, internet. Well, leaving that, the main thing is, you have the option to choose between theater mode or borderless mode. That's it. Now, leaving that, one of the significant and one of the best updates I've seen is actually in the security. You go to users, the user, and now you have the option to add fingerprint sense. You know, like fingerprint. As an application here in the fingerprints, you can easily add fingerprint. Well, you must have a fingerprint reader on your laptop or desktop as well. But this is indeed something you do not get out of the box in other distributions. So yes, that is indeed a huge upgrade. And now we have some, you know, the desktop improvements here as well. For example, let me just open calendar, calculator or calendar, whatever. No calendar as well. Now, if you know, both of them are GNOME applications. That means they follow GTK4 and LibAidVida theme. But right now Linux Mint is using its own theme. So when we try to change theme now, there, let's say I want to go dark. Now all the GTK4, LibAidVida and the native Linux Mint themes and the other applications, all of them follow the same system design theme. Let's say I want mixed. There you go. Let's say I want to go all light. There it is. I want to go dark. There it is. I want to choose another color. There it is. Let's say ping. There we go. Let's say something else. There we go. You see, that's the thing. Now, the design language, the color scheme, the styles, everything is synced properly in the Linux desktop. 
and that is indeed a huge upgrade, if you ask me. Like earlier, the Libite Vita and Gnome themes do not, did not use to follow, you know, Linux Mint themes, but now they do. And now there's something I would like to show you. Like, maybe I cannot show you, but still I would like to tell you about it. So, now Linux Mint Debian Edition runs on slash TMP. Like, temporary files are now stored directly in the RAM, in the memory, instead of your original storage. And, you know, LMD is just following what Debian 13 has introduced. Now, your applications will run faster, launch faster, like this. Yep, just like this. And you will feel an increase in performance and overall responsiveness of the desktop. And don't worry, all the data of the temporary files is not going to pile up. It's going to automatically delete after every 10 days. Auto cleaning is also available, so you don't have to worry about that. And leaving that, I don't know what else there is to show. Like, yeah, there are some under the hood updates. For example, Debian 13 Trixie allows you a wide range of amazing applications you can grab. And all of them are really, really stable and awesome. While our beloved Linux kernel 6.12 has improved the optimization and support for modern AMD and Intel CPUs, better power management for laptops, which is nice, improved graphic support, and it just works better out of the box. You don't have to optimize it like, well, Arch and Fedora and other operating systems. It is already so well optimized out of the box. All you need to do is just plug and play. That's it. And yep, with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think about LMDE7 GG. And yes, in my earlier video, I tried to customize Fedora 43 with the latest GNOME 49 and it sort of went into a failure of a sort. But now at last, the extensions have been updated and now they work properly. So yep, another video of the customization and optimization of my own setup will be released in a few days. And if you have any suggestions of what to create next, let me know in the comments. And I'll meet you next video. Till then, I'm Om signing out.